Please be seated. We'll begin. My name is Robin Harding. I am the Tokyo Bureau Chief for the Financial Times, and it's my pleasure to moderate this event today on behalf of the FCCJ. Our guest today is Mr. Hasegawa Kozo, uh, the Chief Executive President of Global Dining, a um, restaurant operator which is well known to many of us, uh, most famously runs Gompachi, but also Café La Bohème, uh, Monsoon Café, and, and several other restaurants in Tokyo, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Um, Mr. Hasegawa has gained considerable, considerable attention for his stance during the coronavirus epidemic, where he uh, has continued to operate his restaurants past the, the requested closing times by the government during the state of emergency. And he's here today to discuss his lawsuit uh, on the unconstitutionality of the new uh, request from the Tokyo government to close his restaurants early. Um, Mr. Hasegawa, and I should also uh, um, have introduced his lawyer, uh, Mr. Kuramochi Rintaro, will each speak for about 10 minutes, and then we will move to Q&A. So, Mr. Hasegawa, please. Uh, first, uh, we'd like to thank uh, FCCJ uh, very much for this um, uh, opportunity to have this press conference. Uh, let me outline uh, how we ended up with this litigation. Uh, beginning of last, last year, when uh, uh, Corona, uh, COVID-19 breakout broke out in uh, Wuhan, Wuhan in China, we got uh, very few but very important information, very beginning. Kids, even they get infected, they don't get sick. Young people normally get uh, even positive, they don't have any phenomenon. And, but it's very dangerous for older and uh, uh, sick people. So uh, the spread was very fast and the whole world was in chaos. And for us, and also uh, in business-wide, we are not easy, uh, having easy time for recent years. And then uh, thinking about like a state of emergency and all those things, it could kill our business. So I really studied deep about coronavirus. And then um, what we found was very simple that Again, those very fast information, a like, uh, good example was the result. In 14 months from, uh, I think, February 13th, the total uh, number of dead in Japan is 9,058, which is on uh, March 28th. And uh, the reason why I didn't listen to um, the request of the, the governor of Tokyo, I explained four things. 1998 and uh, 99, uh, 99 winter, the flu killed 33,000 people in Japan. And they didn't declare any state of emergency or anything. And also the second thing, the lockdown and wearing mask it's, I think it's obvious when you see the different countries. Good example is Sweden and England. Sweden didn't do anything like forceful restrictions. And England had uh, multiple rock, uh, very uh, severe lockdowns and everything. The number of the dead in 100,000 people didn't change. Texas and California, same thing, didn't change. So. First time, we obeyed halfway, and uh, we lost the sales almost half. And then we ended up to borrow big uh, loan just to survive. We shut down eight restaurants and all those things. Then I thought things get settled. Then uh, the autumn, the spread came to be very powerful. But I thought it was very natural. The flu is always very strong in winter time. Most of old people in Japan, majority of them, not majority, but big number, they die in winter. 
and many of them are the victim of a flu. Uh, this time, instead of flu, uh, it's a coronavirus. So when uh, I heard the news that the government is uh, the amend amending the, the law to, with the penalty, and uh, I really studied about law too, but I'm amateur, so I need the help from uh, attorneys and uh, the, the specialists. Then I realized I don't want to be illegal. So from the very beginning, I didn't want to play illegal game. So once, what's the illegal in this new law? Then I found out if you get order, and if you don't obey to the mm -hmm. order, you get penalized. So when uh, the Tokyo governor requested all restaurant, restaurants to shorten the operations, this is so-called gyosei shido in Japan. Maybe most of you understand. There's no uh, the, uh, background as a law. It's they just begging, but quite powerful. As a result, 98% of the restaurants listen to this. And for us, again, I said, this situation right now is not the state of emergency in the sense of the, the victim and the real damage. And I haven't seen anyone who are suffering from this virus, but I know so many people suffering so hard from the measures which the government took. The number two, the Irio Hokai, which is like uh, the hospitals is collapsing. And I couldn't believe that. The victim here is like 20 or 30th, 30th the uh, one thirtieth or one fortieth of, let's say, United States or Europe. And number of the beds are so much. Why? I thought maybe the government didn't do their job right. And also all those um, complicated rules here. And also the this virus is categorized second, next to Ebola, which is incre uh, incredibly uh, bothering because normal hospitals couldn't treat them. And uh, also the, the support to the businesses, for us, it doesn't help at all. So the choice was to survive or not. And also, I don't want to survive doing illegal things or doing harm to people in Tokyo. And I truly believed that this, this virus is not dangerous. But high-risk people is older and sick people. And without doing any um, measures to protect them, they were shutting down. And I, in uh, the other uh, uh, press conference, I said, it's like you got infection on top of your finger. And the doctor is cutting your arm from the shoulder. And so many people suffering in between. But they didn't treat this well, let's say, uh, the caring home or hospitals. It's very tough to protect. I think no country really protected those people. That's why the number of the dead is piling up. So um, actually, I was introduced to his group of the attorneys and uh, uh, the call for crowdfunding uh, uh, nonprofit organization. Actually, just a few weeks ago, and I was disclosing all process of being uh, requested and denied it, and then order, pre-order comes in a written form, and I uh, wrote the, the defense letter to the governor, and then I disclosed every step of that in uh, Facebook. And uh, I thought maybe so many people uh, feeling the same way as I did, and many people suffering so much. Then I was introduced to them, and uh, they wanted me to uh, be a plaintiff. But I'm a, I'm a merchant. I, I don't like um, litigation. But same time, I was feeling really that things going on here is very unfair. And then the uh, actual order form came, 
And uh, most, most bothering thing for me was the reason why they sent me the order was I was disclosing all through and influenced the people so much and they were afraid that many other restaurants will follow us. So it says, is, is that denying the freedom of speech? I didn't do anything wrong or illegal. I just disclosed everything on the Facebook. And many people sympathized it. And that's the reason why the order was sent to us first. And I didn't know then the, we are the only two companies got the order. Next day, I found on the TV that there were only 27 restaurants picked, and 26 of them was us. So at that point, I have no choice, but I'll be the solo plaintiff in this litigation. So we sat and together, and uh, Kuramuchi Sensei worked really hard to make uh, the litigation uh, the documents in very short time. And uh, last Monday, uh, we presented that to the, that, the, the, the Tokyo uh, court, district court. This is all story. And uh, I will pass my microphone to Mr. Kuramuchi. And hello, everyone. My name is Rintaro Kuramuchi. Now, I am the lead attorney uh, representing uh, Global Dining in the, in the lawsuit to sue the Tokyo Metropolitan Government uh, that it's order against Global Dining to reduce its business hours and the special legislation which the order is based on are illegal and unconstitutional. It is an incredible honor to be invited to an occasion with such significance. Today, I'd like to share with you about what we are trying to combat from something different from a legal perspective. In this speech, I'd like to invite four navigators, all of whom are iconic Japanese writers, and Soseki Natsume, uh, Yasunari Kawabata, and Yukio Mishima, and Kenzaburo Oe. Uh, the key word is ambiguity. Let us be joined by Kenzaburo Oe, who won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1994 as the second Japanese ever. In his Nobel lecture, Japan, the ambiguous, and myself. Oe accurately portrayed the heart of Japanese people and Japanese society. He referred to the great writer who won the same prize about 30 years ago in the same Swedish land, Yasunari Kawabata. Kawabata, in his novel lecture, Japan, the beautiful in myself, cites poems written by Zen monks to introduce the remarkable gentleness and compassion of Japanese people treating nature such as moon and snow as comrades. Owe commented that Kawabata could only express Japan, the beautiful and myself, through unshareable and introverted spiritual experience portrayed in Zen monk's poems. And through shutting out connection with the outer world, shutting complete, completely as it, it was Sakoku, or national isolation policy, and leading to Japan, the beautiful and myself. In his adjacent speech in 1993 at New York Public Library, this time, Oe cites Soseki Natsume upon describing Japan the ambiguous in myself. Soseki portrayed Japanese as individuals, the agitations they faced upon Western individualism flattening into the country when Japan opened the country and modernized in Meiji era, which in Oe's words he describes as Japan, the struggling, and myself. This is the same concept Jean Paul Sartre rebuked as men is condemned to be free, and every from discussed in Escape from Freedom. And Soseki, in his distinctive tone, discussed the superficiality of modernization of Japan, or opening up. Uh, specific details of his statement, uh, please see my manuscript. 
Uh, Sosek condemns Japan, Japan's modernization as superficial and claims he has no good country plan, yet harshly criticized those pretending as if this modernization happened intrinsically and arrogance, sorry, arrogance in claiming Japan becoming a first-class country after the war. The critiques made in 1911, more than a century ago, still provides us with much insight about our society and forum today. Next, let us go on to the famous gentleman who staked his life around 50 years ago to awaken people to regain Japan in midst the post-war regime. Just 50 years ago from 2020, Yukio Mishima, a writer who topped in a popularity survey for the most dandy men, above all the other celebrities and athletes, such as uh, Toshiro Mifune, uh, Yujiro Ishihara, and Shigeo Nagashima, committed a suicide by ritual seppuku after entering the control room in the military base near central Tokyo <coughs> and attempting to soli solicit the Japan self-defense force to rise, but failed. While a violent coup is destructive of the constitution, the manifesto by M Mishima on that day is still relevant to to us today. And specific details of his manifesto, and um, please see my manuscript. Today, whether we can call ourselves prosperous or not, uh, post-war Japan, especially the L LDP government, has come together solely under the I identity of economic growth and anti-socialism. However, now that neither of them exist, the party has corrupted itself into protecting status quo, making no commitment to any values. No fundamental remediation is taken for the many problems we face in today's society, not to mention the declination of birth rate and aging population and education, uh, work style, tax and social security, a legal system, an imperial family system, and so on. There's, there are only patchworks of ad hoc initiatives. Political power is corrupt with dedication to overglazing contradiction, protection of one's merit, thirst for power and hypocrisy. While decisions on fundamental issues are influenced by foreign countries, uh, United States, will the current politicians or citizens be able to give a clear answer or rebuttal to this statement? In his interview one week before death, Mishima left a harsh criticism to the politics. The enemy is the government, the LDP and all of the post-war regime. That includes Socialist Party and Communist Party. For me, Communist Party and LDP are nothing different. They are in fact identical as being symbol of hypocrisy. This also resembles today's politics politics in Japan, whether it is LDP, Constitutional Democratic Party of Japan, Communist Party, it is corrupt with a longing for keeping its seats and positions, thirst for power and hypocrisy. And Soseki, Kawabata, Mishima, and Oe, despite their standings, we can see that they have all combat with Japan, the ambiguous and myself. Unfortunately, it must be emphasized that such ambiguity has been uh, re replenished and nourished by COVID and still stands strong in the center of Japanese society in 2021. The fact that Japan, which um, went through opening up the country after isolation, civilization, and, and enlightenment, and Bumei Kaika, and two world wars and experience modernization and democratization remain ambiguous at its core. As Japan kept operating under its uh, Galapagos-sized uh, closed rule, the country stands where it is today, manifesting the very concern raised by Soseki 100 years ago. 
being unable to achieve Western-derived political framework and values in an intrinsic manner. Under the COVID era, people of Japan were bombarded with requests for voluntary restraint and other exercise of authority with no apparent legal basis or extension. After all, people of Japan were merely wearing rented costume that is Western-derived political framework and have yet established a Japanese style of liberal democracy. What cannot be overseen is that both Mishima and Oe, who took opposite positions, refer to ambiguous constitution. When facing ambiguity of Japan, for better or worse, the backbone of ambiguity of post-war Japan was the ambiguous constitution of Japan. It is clear in 2021st that ambiguous constitution, which allows flex flexible interpretations of those in power is unable to discipline us, the sovereign people, from having our so sovereignty seized. Oe once described as ambiguous army based on ambiguous constitution. Through this case, we would like to also purse whether this ambiguous constitution can really save our rights and serve as a tool to better design the society. Lastly, I would like to finish my speech by introducing the closing statement from Soseki's lecture, My Individualism. And Soseki states that his insight on individualism may somewhat be of your reference. However, also close the speech, nothing. If there were any confusions about his lecture, it must be because he did not explain it enough or did not explain it adequately. And encourage the audience to not leave the confusion as it is and come to my house. I will try to explain to you as best I can. I believe that this kind of attitude is essential. We need to follow through with not leaving the confusion on ambiguity. Of course, in the world of today, we do not easily invite others to our houses, but we would like to thoroughly face the bad ambiguity. I use the term bad because in Japan, there are also good ambiguities. Through this case, we hope to face the ambigu ambiguities of Japan and make it as a step to unite with the various existences in this society that are not easily seen behind the veil or that we pretend not to see. I thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hasegawa, for your clear explanation. And thank you, Mr. Kuromochi, for taking this case to a higher intellectual plane than I think we thought we were going to, to be discussing today. Um, the, let me just ask a few, we, we will do this Q&A in Japanese with interpretation. Let me ask a few factual questions first, and then uh, I will move to questions from the floor. So please prepare your questions now. Um, so first on crowdfunding, how much money have you raised so far from how many donors? Crowdfunding について as of today, 2,000, approximately 2,600 people um, have donated 17.3 uh, uh, million yen. And is that enough to fund this case? I'm sorry, I didn't hear Was that, Is that a sufficient amount of money? We projected maybe 6 million yen, but uh, it was so much far and much more people, 2,666 people in one week. And we are really uh, optimistic about Japanese society. Uh, this is a new weapon for normal citizen 
to be able to fight against the authority. Great. It, Should this be interpreted into Japanese or? No. Okay. Um, and could you, Mr. Hasegawa, describe the business impact that COVID has had on your business? Um, how, how much trouble has it caused? How many people have lost their jobs? That kind of thing. Yes. Uh, the first, uh, the state of emergency last year, springtime, well, we did, you couldn't do anything because almost the whole uh, country shut down, uh, uh, Tokyo shut down. And uh, like Gompachi, which was depending on foreign guests so much, our sales was like 15% of the uh, year before, for a long time. 15, one, one five, for a few months. Then uh, we didn't give up, keep on bringing in uh, Japanese customers who normally couldn't get the reservation because of the, the too busy business. Now, we are not back yet, but we are uh, about maybe 75% of normality. But uh, last year was really tough. Altogether, our fiscal year ended in December. Our sales lost 46% gross. And uh, we made a record high uh, net loss. Operating loss was more than uh, Junioku, 120 million. No, 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 no. No, 1.2 billion yen. And then to survive, I was lucky. I could uh, borrow the money enough from uh, my bank, banks. And uh, also we <coughs> reduced our um, the capital from 1.25 billion yen to Sanzenman, 30 million yen. Now we are categorized in small businesses. Then we are eligible to apply for the loan from governmental banks, which we did. So altogether, we increased our the debt, uh, 1.3 billion yen, on top of the old debt. So when it happened, uh, well, this is the answer. I wait for the next question. Um, thank you. H how much did staying open, despite the state of emergency, help you? Did it save you a lot of money? Actually, it, re uh, it really helped because I didn't count on that. I just didn't want to listen to this ridiculous measure which doesn't help people, making people suffer. But as a result, only 2% of the restaurants opened. So ones who opened with the normal operation hours, I think people rushed and we were rushed. And uh, in uh, February, I feel a bit guilty because most of people are suffering, but uh, our sales jumped 22% from the previous year. And our net profit was pretty good. Uh, it's again, world profit, uh, a record profit of February, February since I started business 48 years ago. Okay, I'm going to open up to questions from the floor now. Let me say three three things, well, four things. First, please identify your name and affiliation. Um, second, questions, not speeches. Uh, third, restrict yourself to one question, please. We will come back to you if there is time. Um, and fourth, please keep your questions on topic. This is a press conference about COVID-19 and Global Dining's response to that. It is not an opportunity to ask about unrelated matters. Um, with that, who has a question from the floor? Patrick. Okay, my name is Patrick Welte, German newspaper, Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung. I have several questions, but I restrict myself to one. Did you have ever any cases of COVID infections happening in your restaurants, any clusters happening in your restaurants over the last year since the beginning of the pandemic? え、パンデミックが始まって以降、御社のえ店舗レストラン1店でもクラスターないし、あるいはえコロナの陽性者の件数というものは一度でも出ましたでしょうか。The uh, we didn't uh, we didn't have any cluster case, but uh, our employees including
maybe all together, maybe close to six, seven people uh, that was positive and uh, in quarantine, but nobody got seriously sick. And also, I don't know, like uh, more than a year ago, my assistant got high fever. And at that time, Japan was ready to have an Olympic. She called um, the health department, and they asked her to wait like four days. If temperature didn't go down, then we're going to take care of you. Then after two days, her fever went down. The third day, she came back. So I, I, I bet you had a... COVID-19, you recovered. I don't know how many times I have been positive, but I never got, got sick. So this is the reality. And uh, we didn't have any cluster. So, okay, Patrick, you, you want to follow up? Yeah. Uh, Patrick Welter once again. Are there any, when you started the lawsuit, uh, lawsuit have you been contacted by any other companies, restaurants that would like to join your suit? I didn't have the, the direct request or the approach from other businesses, but uh, on the internet, quite many restaurateurs were responding to me. And some of them were saying that they were uh, uh, operating longer. And if they get the order, maybe we can get together. But as a result, nobody got the order except for one. So we, di we didn't have any chance to get together. Thank you. Um, the lady in the second row. Haruko Watanabe, HKW. Hasegawa san, you are. I hold it this way, yeah. Uh, you are the hero of uh, restaurant industry, but now you are hero of Japanese citizens. I think uh, uh, the uh, Tokyo bureaucrat won't let you go free. Uh, I have one big question, one small question. Can I ask two together? No. No, okay. <laughs> well, I ask one bigger question. Uh, wh what do you think is the impact of your action to the uh, Tokyo Metropolitan election? Um, for the election? I don't know, but I was approached by uh, a few, a few uh, the legislator from uh, the Metropolitan uh, Congress. And, uh, but again, the reason why I could uh, speak out like this was, I'm strange. I have very few friends. I don't like any tie with authority. I never get tempted to get. So uh, there are a few people like me in Japan too. But um, uh, election-wise, well, this is political. I don't want to get into this, but uh, uh, Koike-san had a mistake, and then uh, she was stabbed from uh, by the, the governor of uh, Kanaga Prefecture. Uh, she was manipulating them. Then um, she she was. Everybody felt now she was using this COVID-19 as a tool to play her power game and the election. So I think uh, there's a certain uh, uh, effect, effect in the, the coming uh, metropolitan election. But I don't know how. Yeah, follow-up question is fine. To be clear, I, I welcome follow-up questions, but it's better if we have one question, one response. Maybe it's only uh, half a question. Uh, you know, a Tokyo bureaucrat won't let you go freely. You may expect some mean ijime from Tokyo bureaucrat. And what kind of ijime are you expecting? I, uh, are your kitchen clear? Uh, no sanitary problems? All your employee has a proper visa or Japanese system? Actually, I have worked. Just a second. Let's translate the word ijime yes, just in ijime case. Ijime is bullying. Yeah, bullying. bullying. 
bullying? Actually, uh, the restaurant business itself being a board all the time. <laughs> I mean, but again, I work with, uh, long time ago I was expanding and uh, I had a small fire, mm. multiple small fire, which didn't make a um, real fire. Mm. And then uh, I was uh, public already. And I was checked by a Shobocho, like a fire department. Mm -hmm. And it was really tough because I did many things illegally. But the reason why I did that was there was no penalty. So this is the typical Japanese law. They set the law, but they don't set the penalty. Just like a speed ticket, if you don't need to pay fine, I think the, the risk is getting much higher. I was called, visited the central office. I'm just explaining how I worked with the bureaucrat. And I find out the people working there is not bad people. They were just be, uh, working in a big uh, machine. Sometimes they look like a machine. But I was told, Hasegawa-san, we are not trying to make you bankrupt. But you are lucky if those things get bigger and if it damages to human life or anything, you could never survive. Mm -hmm. There's none. The businesses who had a fire and people died, they all vanished. So he said, you're lucky. I know it's tough, but I have been uh, going to your restaurant, and actually, we like your restaurant. So please, gambatte and survive. And that I, means you have no sanitation problems or no now, illegal visa among your employees? The, I don't have any. I mean, all must, uh, my uh, foreign staffs are with uh, the official visas or married to Japanese ladies mm. or Japanese men. Okay, thank you very much. Ganbatte. Hi. Okay, thank you. Do we have any more questions from the floor? Yes. Thank you, Rocky Swift with Reuters. I was wondering if you could comment today on some media reports that some 23 health ministry employees were out drinking quite late at night, and today the health minister uh, apologized for that. So from your perspective, uh, do you think that constitutes a kind of a, a hypocrisy, or, or or perhaps you, 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 uh, you can uh, commiserate with these employees for wanting to go out late uh, at a restaurant such as, as you're operating. Thank you. ロイターの uh, I knew many of them, uh, like the legislators or the, the scientists working for the government, knew what this uh, virus is. They shared the feeling with me. That I was curious why this uh, the, the stream of um, like scaring people so much. It's all because of the maybe election or power game. They like to please uh, the older people who are scared, whatever. So they don't know. Uh, they don't think it's really dangerous for them to go out and drink. But it's a hypocrisy. Um, they shouldn't support this uh, direction if they don't feel that. But in Japan, uh, do you understand? Do you understand? Pressure to assimilate. Yes. And uh, when uh, you are in a group, and majority of the group going one direction, nobody say no. They just follow. Just like sheep. Like I used to love the, the series of the rawhide, the stampede. One bull started running and everybody following after. Even uh, the, the political, political parties not without power. They are the worst than uh, Jiminto. And at, at least the like, Jiminto watching both the corona and business, and they wanted to balance out. But uh, Koike-san doesn't have that balance. 
That's why so many people pissed with, uh, no, sorry, <laughs> upset with her. Um, there are several more questions from the floor, but one I want to ask first, because I think it's very important. Uh, why do you think that you can judge what's safe for coronavirus? Surely this is a job for experts. The, the result, I said, 1998 and 1999 winter, flu killed 33,000 people. And this time, in 14 months, 9,038 people died. And average death uh, age was 79. And 86% of the dead are over 70. And all those numbers, more than any proof, it's so clear that this is not that serious thing. But around the world, many hundreds of thousands of people have died. And with respect, should you be making that decision, or is it a job for elected politicians? I don't want to get into that, because there are so many now conspiracy theories going on. And I don't know what's right or not. But one thing is, my brother passed away last year. And uh, her wife found he was dead. And then. Uh, the, her body, his body was taken to check if he was positive or not. And if he was positive, he's, he, he died from uh, the corona, which is not true. He was uh, suffering from diabetes for a long time. So you don't know exactly how, how many people really died from uh, the COVID-19. And there are so many now informations. I don't know where to believe. But uh, one thing is even PCR test it can be so manipulative if you make it, uh, how do you call that, 35 or 54, when try to find the, the tip of uh, the virus, you can make everybody, everybody so positive. So I don't know, but I know the, the, the result in Japan, which is very fortunate. Okay, uh, let me go back to the floor. Is it Teddy? I can't see from the mask. Okay. I'm Teddy Jimbo. I'm with the Video News. I think I'm going to ask questions in uh, in Japanese, if I may, and have a translator um, translate it into English. あ、朝川さんのえっと、ビデオ結局、グローバルダイニングがその、表現の自由のま、we have translation of the question first. This is Ajimbo from Video News. I haven't looked at the complaint yet. Maybe it's all in the complaint. But one question. In the notice from the uh, Tokyo Metropolitan Government, uh, one of the reasons cited was the fact that uh, you or your company had uh, spoken out, uh, had communicated about the fact that global dining will not uh, follow uh, the uh, will not follow the uh, order, and this, uh, of course, pertains to freedom to express, freedom of expression, uh, which I would like to uh, hear about. But the fact that global dining uh, was uh, singled out uh, due to several reasons, one of which was the fact that uh, the company uh, spoke out, and freedom of expression, of course, is one of the uh, key articles in the Constitution. So, how much weight uh, did you place on that? aspect as opposed to the risks that you will bear as a restaurant uh, chain. Uh, the fact that you spoke out, how much weight did you place on that? 
じゃあ英語でどっちでも。The, あの the weight on that is one of the two major things. The other one is next day I found out we were targeted. The 26 restaurants out of 27, which got the order, were ours. So, two things freedom of speech, and the second thing is equality under the law. These are two very important basic rights of human beings in democracy. And I was grow, grew up in a democratic ambience and、uh, education system. I was born in 1950. And、uh, the, maybe the United States was really pushing Japan to have a, a democratic value, and we grew with that. And、uh, for me, if I just pass it, when I'm dying, I will, be regret. I, I will regret. It's not money, and I agree with, with him. It's not for money. It's, for me, the major thing is I don't want to keep freedom of speech. And equality under the law. And he,、uh, for me as an amateur, I clearly sense that someone violated that. That's why I, I, I almost forced to be、uh, a single plaintiff. I'm a merchant, I don't want to do this. I'm an entertainer. Okay. Even?、Um, are there any more questions? Patrick again. Patrick Welter, Hasegawa san, what is your explanation? I mean, looking from a Western standpoint, it's quite puzzling to see that most restaurants in Japan over the last year followed the order, even if there was no penalty. So, what is your explanation? Why is it that a system like that、yes. works in Japan? And why is it that if such a system works, why is it that the government introduced these penalties? Over the last month or s o Okay.、Um, it's my understanding. But I believe this country right now is the most pure racial nation. Most of people here, citizens, thinking they're Japanese and sharing the same culture. And this is a huge village. Everybody expects to be the same way. This is the beauty of Japan, maybe. Many foreigners like this country, but the weakness of this culture, too. Then the weakness was proven before the war. In,、uh, before the, the let's say,、uh, World War I, before it ended, Japan enjoyed so much prosperity from World War I. They were producing and selling to the world. And then, that time, there was a democracy. We call Taisho, which is era, a democracy. In a matter of just 10, 10 years, 12 years, all those people supporting the democracy turned to be the right wing because economically, Japan was suffering.、Uh, uh, that Kanto Daishinsai, 21, no, 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 21,、uh, the stock corruption after the war. 23rd, Kanto Dai Shinsai, 27th, Japanese、uh, the financial crisis, and the 29th, World Depression started. And in the 30s, Japan, the farmer, I, I, my father was from country, the poor fa-、uh, the farmers were selling their daughters to whole house, and girls were volunteering to go to support her family. And then her brothers were in military. And lots of coup d'etat and everything. And everybody who was left winger to the right winger supported the invasion in China, China and everything. And except for maybe Isoroku Yamamoto, nobody had a question to jump into the war with the United States. He was the only one who knows that Japan will be destroyed if they had an alliance with the Nazis, Hitler. And、uh, Italy, the Sangoku Dome, the alliance. And then that was a very dangerous thing. Once the switch was turned on, Japan can be won. And、uh, I felt that in this case also. Everybody follows. Scary. They don't think, they follow. And they were educated that way. 
if you think and asking why to the teachers, you're a bad boy. And I was. Um, yes, Teddy again. すいません、あのえっ、ー、と宮野の人望です。もう一点だけあのえっ、ー、と今回あの羽田さんはあのまあお金の問題ではないということで、はい、まあ104円だけということなんですが、あのまああの政治家だとかまあ家庭の問題には答えられないということで言われちゃうかもしれないんですが、もし今回ですね、はい、その営業まあ短縮あるいはあの、えー、要請と同時に十分な保証があれば。これは応じる余地があったのか、それとも,もうこれはお金の問題ではないんで、そもそも根拠が希薄なんで、それに応じる必要がないとは考えのか、まあ、今回、大きな問題として、保証が明らかに不十分だということはあると思うので、その点、もしよければお願いいたします。One more question, if I may. Uh, uh, regarding the fact that you're only seeking 104 yen、uh, per a restaurant in the damages suit, let me ask you a hypothetical question, maybe not acceptable to a politician, but nevertheless, if、uh, together with、uh, the order to reduce business hours, if the government is to provide adequate、uh, compensation,、uh, would you have accepted that? Or do you think there is no basis to begin with?、Uh, so you would not have accepted、yes. that either way? Yes,、uh, the support wasn't、uh, good enough. That's one thing. But the other thing is, it wasn't the order. In America, the policy, which I didn't agree, but it was mandate. And、uh, if it's、uh, the legal thing, And uh, the, uh, the, if uh, we were the part of,、uh, the, 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 part of the, the society, we obey. And in the United States, they had to ask, do this. And if you don't do that, police come and、uh, shut down. But at the same time, they did their duty. They offered reasonable support. Like,、uh, we, took, we have a small company there, we took a PPP.、Uh, Payroll protection program. And the、uh, application wasn't easy, but、uh, we could do it. And as soon as we applied, two weeks after, money was wired to our checking account, which、uh, helped us not to fire our employees. So if Japan did the same thing, I obey. And I, from the beginning, I didn't want to be illegal. Okay, thank you. Um, in a minute, it will be last chance for questions from the floor. So if you have any, please consider them. I have one more to Kuramochi san.、Um, maybe this is hard to answer, but is this a winnable lawsuit or is this just a protest? Do, do you think there are grounds to actually win this lawsuit? Yes. <laughs> 試合に負けて勝負に勝つっていうのがあるんですけどもあのもちろん訴訟にはあの勝つつもりでやっていますがやっぱりその中であの通っているです、ね、憲法違反であるとか今長谷川社長がおっしゃった民主主義の話であるとかそういうことを問題提起することがまず第一の目的であの訴訟にはもちろん勝つつもりで戦略を立てていますが。まずはその中身の勝負に勝つということをあの重視しています。There's a Japanese、uh, expression, a、uh, sports expression,、uh, lose the match but、uh, win uh, the uh, struggle or the fight.、Uh, we intend, of course, win the、uh, lawsuit, but the weight is placed on, priority is placed on、uh, the unconstitutionality. Of the case and democratic ideals, as Mr. Hasegawa just、uh, spoke about. And once again, we are intending to win this、uh, lawsuit and we're strategizing accordingly.、Uh, but the weight,、uh, initial weight, is placed on、uh, winning、uh, the struggle or, or the、um, actual、uh, competition, not the individual match. Okay, thank you. So, this is your last chance for questions.、Um, one more from Rocky. Anybody else? We'll take any remaining questions together. No, I didn't. Oh, and Patrick. So, we'll have a question from Rocky and a question from Patrick.
Thank you, Rocky Swift with Reuters. My question is similar to one that Robin asked a little bit earlier. Hasegarsan, you are an expert in restaurants and merchants and yes. merchandising and entertainment, as you said. But what would you say to infectious disease experts, such as Omi Sensei or Oshitani Sensei, Nishiyori Sensei, who the, the latter two have spoken here in the past year, who say that keeping restaurants open uh, at regular business could endanger lives. And from their expert opinion, that's what they say. So, okay. so we're, what is your point of view to counter them as, in, as infectious disease experts? Yes, uh, I don't know those doctors, but uh, I know a few whom I, I got acquainted with uh, over the Facebook or Messenger. And one of them is uh, the mayor Kyoju in one uh, uh, substantial university, and he was a specialist. And then uh, I put it, uh, where they read my uh, uh, information, message to the, the, the Tokyo government, and they, they, well, again, on the internet, those specialists said, what Mr. Hasega was saying, totally right. This, the reason why, again, this is a very complicated issue, but the reason why Japan or Japanese or Eastern Asian uh, dead total is so much less than the rest of the world, again, there are a few controversial things, but two things maybe it's true. Like our cold, which we get every winter, is coronavirus, which is kin or uh, relatives of this COVID-19. So basically, we had certain amount of um, uh, uh, no, uh, immunity. 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 And the two, when uh, this uh, the COVID-19 uh, broke out in uh, uh, Wuhan. They say, it's already proven, they said, the initial COVID-19 came to Japan very early, and type was K and S, and both of them are very weak. But K had the immunity, I mean, the immunity against K worked, G type, which developed, and uh, got uh, the more poisonous, more, more like dangerous. And when they came back to Japan, Japan had already immune system to K, so it worked to G pretty well. So those things were really reasonable, and uh, like all those uh, the so-called uh, specialists on the the government sides, they don't say anything like that. They just said number of the uh, uh, infection, infected people, and they mixed up infection and uh, positive. I don't know if they understand or not, but they just put all number together and threatening people. And just very simple. Same year, 1990, uh, 2019, December, actually, uh, flu was very powerful. And suddenly I had to shut down, but there's a big uh, restaurant called Jizong in Gompachi there. In one day in December, I had 11 young people couldn't come to work because of flu. 11 people in one day. And it was hard because we had to operate. We have to open the restaurant. And all of a sudden, January, flu vanished. And maybe COVID-19 came. They were spread so much faster. And then uh, it was, uh, the flu was controlled because of the, the virus, how to say, kansho, virus kansho. Interference, in viral virus interference. Yes. And uh, all those things, I live normal uh, the life, and I didn't feel any threat from this virus. I don't know anyone who got really sick or died, except for people in the really serious condition or, or very abusive people. So, so to be clear, your answer to Omi Sensei or Oshitani Sensei would be, other experts disagree, so I, I, can I didn't hear you. them, so I don't. I cannot say that. Omi Sensei, Yoshitani Sensei, in terms of the chief's opinion, do you think that other experts do not think so? Do you think that other experts do not think so? Do you think that other experts do not think so? Do you think that 
many, many experts uh, whose yes. uh, voices are unheard uh, are saying the same thing as yeah. I am. And one Japanese word he mentioned previously was Professor Emeritus. Okay, thank you. Um, Patrick, last question. We need to finish. Patrick Welter from Quitter Allgemeine. How far is your, your lawsuit is based on freedom of speech and equality of treatment? But now you are making all these arguments that COVID as such is not as dangerous. So would you be in favor for giving up all opening hour restrictions for restaurants in Japan in this time? Would you be in favor for opening the border to let foreigners come to Japan to visit the uh, Tokyo Olympics? So, I'm sorry, I need your help. Medically, I think you can do that, but politically, maybe you cannot do that. It's not only Japan. Most of countries' leaders, they are together with the Japanese government. And they, I don't know if they're really scared or they make people scared, I don't know, but already it's done. Like a foreign, foreign audience cannot come. So. It's politics, I don't want to get into that. But if I were, uh, but Olympic, you know, I experienced uh, Tokyo Olympic on, in 1964. It was beautiful. I was so excited. I, I was a young boy, I was 14. But now, Olympic, I don't get so excited. It's commercial, and uh, it's so political. It's not so pretty. But anyway, it's, it, I'm de derailing, <laughs> sorry. Okay, we're out of time. Um, so I hope you will join me in thanking um, Mr. Hasegawa and, uh, and Mr. Kuramochi for their very interesting presentations. Um, as is our custom, I, I would like to give Mr. Hasegawa uh, a year's honorary membership of our club. <laughs> Since he has, um, has 40 restaurants of his own, he may not want to come and dine with us, but I hope he will, he will come sometimes so thank well, you Mr. Hasegawa well, thank you so much. and please join me in the round of applause thank you thank you both we're adjourned